tech. What? Hello, and welcome back to the captain's vlog. This might well be the final video of the year. It's uh, early October now, and we managed to catch quite a nice day of weather. So after a week of sitting at home around with a bit of uh, the COVID in the family, I finally felt good enough to get out in the car. So I came up to Lincolnshire again, because the roads are nice around here. Been for a little bit of a rip with the lads and uh, just basically stretched the car's legs a little bit. Just had a nice time. It's just lovely to be in here, you know what I mean? It's just nice to come out. The car now has 1,265 miles on it all since the, the fresh rebuild of everything. And uh, it's been absolutely solidly reliable up to this point. The only mild issue that I have had is with oil temperatures on the track at Silverstone. They got pretty high up to like 130 nearly. So we need to look at that. We're gonna fit an oil cooler in spring, uh, thermostatic sandwich plate and stuff like that, get all that sorted out. And then uh, hopefully you should manage the oil temperature a bit better. Power steering as well, we need to add some power steering because when it wants to torque steer, it's pretty violent. So, uh, what we have done is we've got some mad little clips of the boys doing some rips, some pops and bangs and all that sort of stuff. Proper back road country here. So we'll, we'll skip to them clips and then maybe we'll do a little bit of a thousand mile review on my way home. We're good.
That is so cool. <laughs> that is so sick. It's a mad thing. That is wicked, mate. Oh, I've got a right headache though. Take noise is quite good outside. Captain's got to uh, Sherry inside. Recording now. Oh, did I miss it? <laughs> did I miss all of it? <laughs> yep. Fuck off! <laughs> uh, I don't know if I recorded it off the window then. Does that mean you're recording mine or not? Yeah. <laughs> Justin, what's going on? That's 
you get the oil temperature up, mate. He's not been doing this very long. He doesn't know how to YouTube it all. <laughs> is asbo loving sheep <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is a special breed of sheep that don't give a shit about honda two-stepping <laughs> they're, they're, they're just like mate where's my, where's my next bit of grass coming from you fuckers back at the old uh, belvoir castle <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mate look at the light the light's fucking rush we've just been for a little bit of a rip out with the boys nothing major <laughs> yeah well, it's the last day of summer, pretty much. Feels like it. The weather's going to be shit going October, forward, isn't it? Probably. <laughs> well, yeah, it's early October now, so. Turn this off. Day. Yeah, it's going to get a bit shit from now, so I'm probably going to take it home, put it under the cover, and that'll be it till March. Any trouble with these bloody harnesses? You get to a junction, you've got to loosen them off so you can see. inside the cabin is somewhat unbearable so you end up having to drive with some of these in your lug holes the whole time which to be fair is a small price to pay for how awesome it is at everything else that it does um, no power steering all these people that love a no power steering car it's great but there's two times when it's really bad maneuvering maneuvering and maneuvering that was three i know and maneuvering is bad trust me so technically that's one. The second thing is, because of the diff, when it talks to us on a country road, you've got fat tyres on the front, you've got 215 cross-section tyres, they're flat as you like along the bottom, they're dead grippy, and you've got the M-Factory helical diff in the gearbox, and it torques steers everywhere. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, and if you've got power steering, you can easily sort of make minor corrections to keep the car going where you want it to go. But without any power steering, I find it really, really difficult to do that because you've got to put so much physical force through the steering wheel that when the one wheel slightly unloads, you suddenly go across the road even more severely than you would do with the torque steer. So for me, I think electric or hydraulic power steering, depending on what you're running, that's what I'm going to do over the winter, I think. Well, not over the winter, it becomes springtime. I'm going to get a steering pump and get some lines made up and just give it power steering. I think it will make it so much better to drive and like when you're on a track, it's fine without power steering and it actually feels really good. So I'll put it on a switch so you can just flick it off and just use it for just normal cruising and whatever. But you don't tend to get torque steer on a circuit, nowhere near as bad as you would on a B road because you don't have the lumps and bumps in the road. The surface is a lot more uniform. Um, that's pretty much it. And the brakes, the yellow stuff brakes are horrendous. Now on the road, don't get me wrong, if you're just gonna do a short little drive, on the road they're actually really good initial bites nice and they heat up fairly quickly and they do bite really really 
well and they've got some temp in them. Um, the issue only comes when you want to work on them, you know, for extended periods, you know, like 10, 15 minutes or more in one hit. Then you find they start to they start to get hot really fast and they can't get rid of it and they struggle. So if it's a fast road car, unless you're, you know, Mika Hakkinen or Jack Halfblind, then you're gonna ruin them pretty quickly. But for most regular drivers, I'll say they're probably gonna be alright for you. Now exhaust wise, outside this car's brilliant, it's not that loud at all, and that's fucking great. It's barely barely 94 for 95 decibels, so it's track legal just about everywhere. <coughs> Fuel consumption. Now we had the car weighed and it weighed 1040 kilos and the fuel consumption really isn't that bad like I did a tank to tank fill and we did um, what did we do we did some track time on it we did some dyno runs on it and I did some general running around on it and I got 30 just shy of 31 miles per gallon which I didn't think was too bad at all considering that it's a 226 horsepower engine that it gets ripped on pretty well. The shining glory though in this car is the chassis. The way this car feels when you pitch it into a bend is so rewarding. So rewarding. I, I completely get now. I completely get now why people love 90s Honda chassis. Peace out.